More protests and more political resignations in Lebanon as anger over the Beirut port blast grows. Security forces use tear gas to hold back hundreds of protesters as they tried to storm the parliament. The demonstrators accuse the government of corruption and negligence. Beirut's governor has announced the number of dead from last Tuesday's massive port explosion has climbed to more than 200. For more on the protests and the fast-moving political developments, let's go to Rebecca Collard, who's been on this story from the very beginning for us. So, Rebecca, walk us through what happened overnight and whether more protests are planned. Yeah, Hannah, we saw another night of clashes between protesters and police in the in the center of the city. Um, Saturday night, also, we saw quite massive anti-government demonstrations. Um, and then yesterday, protesters back in the street. Uh, you know, they were throwing rocks, lighting things on fire, and, and the police and security forces used a barrage of tear gas to burst them eventually from downtown. But what you're seeing, Hannah, is just the absolute anger of people here in Lebanon over the blast on Tuesday. You know, everybody I talk to tells me that um, it's the sort of corruption, nepotism, and mismanagement that they have suffered for decades that caused the blast on Tuesday. They say it's absolutely the government's responsibility. And there are lots of calls, kind of, for the whole government to step down now. Now, more cabinet ministers have resigned, of course, in the wake of the disaster. These moves come as an international donor summit promised aid in return for government reform. So what's the latest on that? Yeah, let's parse this out a little bit, Hannah, because it's a bit of a complicated situation, and I think the details are very interesting. First of all, in regards to the uh, resignations that we've seen so far, I will tell you that none of the protesters I spoke to um, were thought that this was in any way uh, even close to enough of what they wanted. They want something much, uh, much bigger. They don't want a few ministers uh, to resign. They want the whole uh, government to resign, and a lot of them are saying, um, as people here have been saying since October, uh, in protest that they want a new government system, um, Hannah. So, that, so that's the first thing I would say. Uh, the second thing I would say in regards to this donor conference and what we heard yesterday from international um, powers who want to give money to Lebanon, I mean, you can even see behind me here that the city is so damaged. You know, um, uh, there was about 300 million U.S. dollars pledged. That's nothing compared to what it's going to take here. Uh, government officials are saying around $15 billion are needed to uh, reconstruct Beirut. And then next, I would say that there is this call for reform. So um, there has been a pledge. Uh, there has been a request from the International Monetary Fund uh, for a month or even longer, Hannah, uh, for reforms in Lebanon in order for uh, them to be able to give uh, the country money. And Lebanon hasn't been able to, to, to make those reforms. And that, of course, predates this blast. Now, I would say uh, there's even more attention on that. So, you know, most of the countries, Canada, France, uh, most of the international countries seem unwilling right now to give money to Lebanon's government. And I would say, Hannah, that most of the people I talk to in the street say that that's exactly what they want. They do not want any of this um, aid going to Lebanon's government. And why that is, Hannah, is because, you know, for decades, uh, Lebanon has received aid, loans, all kinds of financial support from the international community. And if you talk to protesters here on the street, what they'll tell you, Hannah, is that a lot of that aid was siphoned off uh, through nepotism and corruption and mismanagement. And they don't want to see that happen again, because right now, you know, Lebanon is facing one hundred and fifty one billion dollar debt. And that is going to be the responsibility of the people here. And if you talk to people here, they'll tell you so much of that money went to this corruption and went to mismanagement. So um, what we're hearing from the international community is being echoed on the street, Hanna. And we're going to have to wait and see in the coming hours, in the coming days, whether or not we see more resignations from the government. But I will say uh, there are rumors uh, circulating that there will be more resignations and even rumors circulating that we cannot confirm that the prime minister may be stepping down. So likely to see political changes uh, also here in Beirut, Hannah. Well, we know you have your eye on everything for us. As always, Rebecca Collard in Beirut, thank you so much. So for more on the political fallout in Lebanon, I'm joined by Tony Badrin. He's a research fellow with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. It's a research institute focusing on national security and foreign policy, and we've reached Tony in New York. So first off, Tony, thank you for joining us. Uh, what do you make of the resignations so far? Well, these are individual resignations. Uh, the most significant one, I would say, is the finance minister, in, in as much as he is uh, close to the Speaker of the Parliament, 
who is a, uh, a pillar of support for this uh, particular government and an ally of Hezbollah, which is the dominant force behind the government. Uh, so that's an interesting thing, and it, it suggests maybe that uh, the speaker um, is giving something to try to diffuse the street uh, uh, tensions and anger. But it's, none of these resignations are enough yet to actually uh, topple the government. Uh, the, the, the rumors about the prime minister resigning are still that, just rumors. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it bears saying one more thing, that even if the government were to fall, or uh, it, it's, people shouldn't put too much expectation on what comes next, because uh, it takes a long time to form governments in Lebanon. And more importantly, the powers that form governments are the same powers that have formed this particular government or the government before, which was responsible for all the corruption anyway. It's the sectarian barons of Lebanon. They're the powers that be. So uh, I think uh, there might be some sort of a nod to try to diffuse street anger or maybe even to placate the French president's demands. But beyond that, I don't see anything changing really on that end. So you say that there might be a nod to the street anger. Um, do you expect to see more cabinet uh, resignations? Uh, it's unclear. There are a lot of the forces behind this government who are leaking to the press to make it clear that they are actually against this government falling. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's, it's, it's a game at this point to try to maintain the control over the street and over the popular anger, while also trying to, uh, you know, when, when the French president came to Beirut, he also made a demand for a national unity government. Incidentally, what that means is a government of all the sectarian barons together. It's not at all what the street is demanding. Which is, a, which is the departure of all of these sectarian barons. So actually what the French president is pushing for is antithetical to the popular demands on the street. So uh, I think the, the political players are trying to juggle all of these uh, demands in a way that doesn't uh, threaten their uh, vested interests. Could you see the collapse of the government because of these resignations? Uh, well, there's a technicality that you need to have right. a certain number of resignations before it loses the ability to hold quorum and then it de facto becomes uh, it resigned. But then again, it will maintain it will stay on as a caretaker government until a new prime minister is tasked with forming a, a new one. And it's unclear, incidentally, who that person mm -hmm. is. Saad Hariri, the former prime minister. Uh, one of the, again, the pillars of the corruption and the system in Lebanon anyway. Uh, he, is a, uh, he is not particularly well-liked. He, he has his own support, obviously, in his community, but he's among those figures that have been vilified by the protesters um, uh, as being responsible for the corruption, uh, uh, one, you know, as a member of the cartel. Uh, the idea of floating a weaker, uh, quote-unquote, technocratic candidate remains to be seen because, uh, you know, uh, the, the, this, this particular prime minister was floated as such and, and it was a complete failure. So the, the people who are, the powers who are going to be behind any future government in Lebanon are the same sectarian powers that have run the country to the ground for the last 40 years. Yeah. What about demonstrations? We saw these types of protests in the streets before they fizzled out. Do you think something similar would happen here or is it different this time around? There is a sense that something has changed, that uh, the, the anger is far more palpable and it's, um, uh, people have lost everything and they have a sense that basically they have nothing left to lose. Uh, but that in itself doesn't necessarily mean that it will translate into uh, meaningful change the way, uh, uh, you know, the way the people want it. Uh, assuming they have a unified stand on what they want, there is still a lot of sectarian division in Lebanon. Uh, there are different, you know, differing strategies for how to approach dealing with the ruling elite. You know, do you do it incrementally? Do you call for all of them to leave at once? Uh, uh, and then the, the elephant is in the room is that you have a very powerful militia, Hezbollah, which has its loyalists who are armed, who are, have no compunction uh, to take to the streets and beat people up and lead to violence and potentially even uh, f flashes of uh, civil conflict. Um, we don't know, we haven't seen yet all that stuff play out. So uh, the, the demands on the streets 
are an expression of anger, but how they translate to meaningful change remains to be seen. Yeah. What will you be watching for? I mean, in the next hours, we know there's a cabinet meeting going on, but also in the next few days. So we will see if Hezbollah and the powers behind this government decide that they are going to sacrifice this government uh, or uh, to maintain their interests in the longer term, or if they're going to hold on to it. That's that's the, uh, on the Lebanese political side. We're going to see on the international side how uh, uh, the French president decides to move ahead with his gambit uh, in Lebanon, which is a very political gambit, incidentally. It's, it's, it's behind a humanitarian facade, but it is very much political. And whether the United States also will play along uh, in, in sort of trying to leverage uh, the uh, the pressure against the government to try to affect some change. I, I'm I remain skeptical of of those efforts, but uh, th these are things to watch for uh, in in the coming days. Tony Badrin, we certainly will, and we appreciate your insights today. Thank you. Tony Badrin is a research fellow with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, and we reached him in New York.